I'm Hunter Barnes. I'm uh, from London, Ontario. I live in St. Thomas right now and uh, paving the way for peer support with CMHA PEP in St. Thomas. And uh, yeah, pot can give you psychosis. Most people don't really uh, like that idea, but it is true. I mean, there's, I don't really think there's much you can tell them. I think that part of coming to terms with that is it possibly experiencing it. I mean, I try to tell people that, but a lot of the time they don't listen because it doesn't seem valid to them. They don't really believe me when I say it. So kind of, I just kind of sit back and try to be a support through it because like, I mean, I can share my experiences with them and how, where that led me. But a lot of the time people don't, they, they want to be individuals, right? They don't want to be like, no, that's, that's, they don't want to say that's me. They, they have to learn it the hard way because it plays with addiction too, right? So there's like a lot of denial and addiction and a lot of other stuff, uh, minimalizing, rationalizing, justifying. So, I mean, you can't like, in a sense, you can't really talk a rational conversation to an irrational person. And that's kind of what happens when you're addicted to marijuana is you can justify and rationalize anything you want about it, right? Even when you're confronted with the facts, most people can just work their power of belief around it. I started smoking pot when I was like 16. And uh, I mean, I wouldn't admit it right away, but like instantly, like I was more high than most people probably um and eventually that led me to like getting into different belief systems which is another warning sign uh kind of like occult stuff you know freemasonry all that sort of stuff so that was another red flag my family saw that but you know i was like no 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 i'm just a stoner you know and then um not much long after that i was hospitalized for like a month and a half and then you know, I wasn't smoking weed during that time and I kind of came to, but at the same time, when I got out, I started smoking weed again and went right back down that rabbit hole. So, and then I'm 25 now and I quit smoking pot like eight months ago. And basically long story short is now I'm looking back like hindsight and I'm like, wow, like I, I, I was a little more out there than most people do get because that's just the way my brain's wired and a lot of people i would say um are at risk of that and now that pot's legal it's probably gonna start coming out more and more and more and more but most people don't see it like i don't know it's a it's a socially acceptable thing now but they don't really see like the the dark side of it because it's not portrayed as much yet right so my experience with it is like a love hate because like I've, I've always loved smoking weed, but eventually there came a point when I was like, okay, you know what? I can't do this anymore. Like it's, it's really messing with my head. Uh, having my son, that was the, that was the turning point. That was probably the turning point. Uh, yeah. Cause, uh, his mom smokes a lot of weed and I was smoking a lot of weed and I didn't feel like it was fair for him to have to have two parents who were unhealthy. So that kind of was like the catalyst of me deciding to start changing for the better. Aside from like the obvious hospitalizations and going down the medication road and all that sort of stuff. Uh, a lot of like socialization support, like, like uh, being around healthier people and like being inspired by them to be healthier because like it's kind of true the cliche like you are who you're closest to is kind of true in that sense when it comes to recovery like if you're hanging out with a bunch of people who are actively using and all that sort of stuff then you're gonna lean towards that way so for me i had to change my people places and things i i couldn't go hang out with those stoner friends and i couldn't go to those same places i i, I don't know i had to change a lot there was a lot of a lot of factors involved um acceptance <laughs> that was probably like the hardest thing
I don't know, like one part of me would want to like just like straight up confront them and be like assertive and factual. And another part of me would kind of want to be more like uh, loving and supportive because I can understand how both are pros and both cons. But I would say uh, when you when you do that sort of stuff, you you feel like you're living life more, but in reality, you're actually taking away from the experience of living your life by being stoned. Like you won't remember everything that you think you're going to. And you know, it's just, it's not worth it at the end of the day, especially if you're in the kind of spot that I was in, because then you're leading yourself down a very unhealthy path that can not only just hospitalize you, but change you for a long time. And it takes twice as much or more work to get back to the quote unquote normal that you were at before. So it's just, it's not worth it. Smoke less and do more. <laughs>